This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, and welcome back to a new tutorial. Well, this one is going to be a bit tough. I've been thinking about this video for, I think, at least two years. And the simple reason why I never created it so far is because it's very complicated to kind of explain uh, the whole uh, theory in a comprehensive and short tutorial, right? So the topic that we're going to talk about is maps, okay? Texture maps, and specifically texture maps for 3D objects. So there are a bunch out there. I'm going to try to go through the main groups. I'm going to talk about how to use them to the extent possible in this video. But more importantly, what I'll do during that is I'll show you examples and I had to go all over the internet to find them. So I won't be able to show all the references, who made what and so forth. I hope that the artists forgive me because this is specifically for educational purposes. All right. So that said, let's jump in and talk maps. Okay, here we go. Okay guys, so I promised to do this video, although I already mentioned that it's kind of tricky to cover everything, but like I said, I'm gonna do my very best, all right? So let's start off by uh, talking about uh, 2D, 2.5D, and 3D, all right? Now, 2D is completely flat. It has two dimensions, right? It has a height and a width. So that can be a photograph, for example, uh, but it can also be a texture that you want to apply to a model. Um, then you have 2.5D. Now, 2.5D is something that you would find in uh, programs like ZBrush, where you can kind of paint in a way that it looks like 3D. That's what they call it, 2.5D. And it's mainly uh, caused by uh, reflection or the illusion of reflection to give you the idea that it looks like 3D. Okay, And then we have the um, the true 3D as in used in Maya, 3ds Max, uh, Blender and so forth, where you have three axes, you have an X, a Y and a Z. So you have true three dimensions. OK, now what we want to talk about is how do you texture those 3D objects? A couple of ways you can do that. One is to uh, wrap a texture around it. And for that, you will need a UV map. OK. So a UV map it can be compared to, let's say, the pattern of a piece of clothing, right? So you would take a roll of cloth, you would take scissors, and you would uh, draw a pattern on a piece of paper. You would uh, cut that uh, pattern out, and then you would wrap that pattern around a 3D object equally to, let's say, a piece of clothing on a human being, where the human being is a 3D object, and a piece of clothing used to be a flat surface, okay? That's kind of how that works. So once you have that UV, you need to apply a texture to it. Now, there are a couple of methods, as I mentioned. For example, in uh, Maya, you can decide to apply a shader to it, like a Lambert or a Blend or a Fong. And basically, what you're doing is you're dumping a bucket of paint over uh, your 3D object. OK, that's kind of how that works. But let's say you want to plug in a texture map, um, a photograph, or something you made manually in Photoshop. Uh, that would have to fit exactly on your UV, of course, and you would apply that to your model. And then finally, uh, which is kind of the most recent, you have PBR texturing. Now, PBR is physical based. And the way you can compare that is Let's say uh, you're holding a football in your hand and you got a can of spray paint. And as you move your hand around with the object in it, you spray paint on that object. OK, now that is, like I said, it's more recent and it's kind of different. So uh, we'll get into that. All right. OK, so let's talk about maps and texture types and so forth. When we look at um, maps in general, you have uh, color maps, you have transparency maps. Um, height maps, specular maps, environment maps, uh, you got light maps with lighting information, and you got a few others. Okay. Now, if we look at the color map uh, arena, what you're going for is you are uh, actually adding uh, color to your model, literally. Okay. So uh, a couple of things you can do that with. Um, uh, you have a diffuse map, for example, an albedo map. And then you have detail maps. Now, normally a diffuse map or what is also called color map is uh, 
basically your color texture for your model. However, when you are using the PBR method, it is called albedo map because it has, um, it's kind of a multi-layered uh, technique where you can extract other maps from that, okay? So if you see um, a diffuse map or a color map, it's a normal texture map. If you see an albedo map, then it is specifically a PBR color map, okay? And then you have some other detailed maps. Um, you know, it's kind of a child detail thing if you really get close into a model where you can see how that works, okay? All right. So what else? Transparency maps. If you have a model, uh, let's say a model wearing a helmet where the, um, you know, there's an opacity and the character can look through a kind of screen on the helmet or whatever, you know, you need transparency. Okay. So that transparency map allows you to create that effect. And you can uh, use that for, uh, let's say, glass, uh, plastics and so forth that you can look through. But you can also use it for, uh, let's say, a plane where you want a, a tree leaf on it and you want some areas visible and some areas not visible, okay? Right, so height maps. Now, there are quite a few there. Uh, actually, I should say bump maps. Uh, the most common ones are bump maps, uh, normal maps, and displacement maps, and height maps, okay? These are the ones that I typically work with. Um, a normal map is um, commonly used, and I would call a normal map like the modern version of a bump map. Um, the odd one in the row here is displacement map, because a bump map and a normal map don't necessarily um, change the actual uh, mesh. However, a displacement map does. So what do you use this for? Let's say um, you have a, um, I don't know, um, a driveway with concrete on it, okay? You don't want that concrete to be completely flat and shiny because it wouldn't look like concrete. You want to have the little dents and bumps and so forth. Now, a um, bump map or a normal map or displacement map gives you that effect, okay? Regardless of color. This is not a color thing, it is a height information thing, okay? So what else? Specular maps. Okay, so um, specularity is related to, uh, let's call it reflection, okay? Um, to give you a sense of what type of material it is. Uh, if you look at, um, let's say, a, a Lambert material in Maya, um, there's no reflection on that. It's a dull material. However, if you take a Fong material, or uh, let's say a Blin, you have a specularity setting. And um, compare that to pointing a light at a, a shiny ball, right? You will see a light uh, reflecting off that ball and that's your uh, specularity, okay? Now, um, in order to tweak the level of specularity, you can tweak intensity, but you can also uh, tweak how clean the, uh, the light line is, if you know what I mean. Um, that can all be set but the most common ones used are the specular map, the gloss map, uh, and then you also have a roughness map, and that's again for PBR, where you can kind of tweak how rough or smooth a surface is, okay? So let's see, what else? Um, we got some uh, environment maps. Um, um, let's see, hey, we're gonna skip that. That's, you know, not commonly used, all right? Now, what is important though is light maps uh, and specifically ambient occlusion. Um, if you look at um, uh, ambient light and how that responds to, uh, to an object, let's say uh, tucked in corners will be darker because they receive less light and uh, surfaces that are bigger and open and exposed to light will receive more light, okay? Now, an AO map or ambient occlusion map bakes that information into that uh, texture map. So when you apply it to the model, you will get a much better sense of, you know, uh, realism, okay? And then, uh, let's see, uh, I think we covered uh, the, the most important ones. One that I didn't mention yet is a curvature map. And uh, what that does is based on your UV, 
the UV of your model, it will figure out where the, um, the angles and curves are on your model. So let's say you created a cube or a box. Um, you know, the cube has uh, corners, obviously. And uh, because you created the UV map, the software will figure out, okay, these are where the corners are. And if you, for example, then apply a PBR texture to that cube uh, and you want some wear and tear on the corners, uh, the curvature map will help the software to do that. Okay. So that's basically the most important um, maps that I typically work with. Um, I'm quite sure that there are more, but these are the ones that I typically work with. And then the next question that I got was, okay, and how do you use them? Now that is way more difficult to answer. Okay. And I'll try to explain why. Um, for example, I mentioned the Lambert material in Maya. Let's say I'm using the Lambert material on an object and I have a specular map. Well, there's no place to put it in the Lambert material because there's no slot to put it in. So what you really need to think about here is, okay, where is my model going to go to and what type of texture maps do I need and can I actually use? For example, I get a lot of questions from people that uh, work in Second Life and they say that it's really limited because they can basically use a diffuse or color map and a normal map and that's it. Okay. So what's the point of having all these different maps if you can't use them anyway, right? Now, in addition, um, if you are rendering for, let's say, a game engine or let's say a movie, totally different story. So you need to figure out up front where you're going to use it and what uh, maps are allowed, so to speak. Now, if you look at a software like Substance Painter, uh, you have profiles that you can use where you say, okay, I'm texturing specifically for Unreal Engine and it will tell you, okay, you can use this map, this map, this map, and this map. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, basically all I have to say about this. Um, I realize it's kind of a, a weird tutorial, but it's the only way I know how to explain this. So hopefully it makes sense. Okay. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions, if you have any comments, I'll be happy to help you out if I can. And that said, thank you guys for listening, mostly not watching, listening, and I uh, hope to see you guys again. Okay, bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time, bye.